Hi, Gordon the Gamekeeper here again. In the Conservation Fact Files 2 and 3 we talked about farmland and upland conservation management. This time we shall look at the role of game and conservation managers in the woodland habitat. A woodland is a habitat where trees are the dominant plant form. The individual tree canopies generally overlap and interlink, often forming a more or less continuous canopy which shades the ground to varying degrees. Woodlands define the landscape and, whether ancient or young, provide homes for thousands of species of plants, animals, invertebrates and fungi. For people, they provide places to explore and connect with nature and a sense of well-being. Ecologically, woodlands absorb noise, pollution and carbon dioxide, they release oxygen, reduce flooding and provide a source of sustainable livelihoods and timber. By managing woodlands sustainably, we are nurturing a habitat that is brilliant for both wildlife and people. Broadly speaking, there are two types of woodland, coniferous and broadleaf. Coniferous woods are made up of trees often having needle-shaped leaves, such as the well-known Christmas tree. Coniferous woodlands are often called forests, as they are planted for commercial timber purposes. Broadleaf woodlands, as their name suggests, are composed of trees with flat leaves, such as oak and beech. Within these broad categories, there are many different kinds of woodland, depending on the dominant tree species making up the wood. Woodlands also vary depending on how long they have been established. In Britain, ancient woodlands are designated as those which have been continuously wooded since at least 1600 AD. In England, the term forest, with a capital F, refers to an area where the king or queen has the right to keep deer and to make forest laws, and this is where gamekeepers were originally employed to protect the monarch's deer herds. The plant species in a woodland tend to grow at various different heights, giving us a structure to discover. The dominant species tend to be the trees which grow the tallest, seeking out the light. This layer is called the canopy. Beneath the canopy is a layer called the understory, consisting of shorter, shade-tolerant trees and shrubs. Below the understory is a layer known as the field layer, which consists of grasses, wildflowers, ferns and herbs. And the lowest layer is known as the ground layer, which consists of lichens and mosses. The number of layers present in any woodland is dependent upon the amount of light penetrating through the canopy. Light is the critical factor in shaping the woodland. For instance, in a beech woodland, the soaring beech trees with their broad flat leaves can block out the light from reaching the woodland floor. This means that in densely shaded areas, little may be able to grow beneath their dominant tree canopy. Conversely, in an ash woodland, the finely divided compound leaves and a fairly loosely branched overall structure result in a relatively light shade which allows a variety of other plants to grow beneath them. There is often a rich understory and field layer in ash woodlands. A variety of light levels from deep shade through to open well-lit clearings will encourage the development of a wide range of plant species beneath the main tree canopy. It then follows that the wider the range of plant species, the greater the diversity of animal species, both vertebrates and invertebrates. Our woodlands have massively reduced in area since the last ice age and the UK now has less tree cover than most European countries. Keeping our woodlands full of wildlife is an important job. Anyone who owns a patch of woodland can help make it as diverse as possible for wildlife. Much of the wildlife within our woodlands now relies on active management to provide a mix of different habitats from piles of dead wood, which can help beetles and fungi, to open glades, which help butterflies. So how do we manage a woodland? Coppicing, the periodic cutting back of selected trees and shrubs, such as hazel and willow, down to ground level, leaving them to sprout new stems from the cut stumps. Coppicing can rejuvenate a tree and allow it to last for many years, meaning it can provide further crops of timber or wood, it also encourages the growth of woodland flowers such as bluebells, primroses and violets by allowing light to the woodland floor. A ride is a linear trackway such as a path 
designed for access. Creating a ride through a woodland creates what are called edge habitats, where the mix of sunlight, exposure and some shelter combine to create a high level of plant and animal species diversity. These edge habitats benefit many bird and insect species, including rare and declining woodland butterflies, such as the small pearl-bordered fritillary and the white admiral. Gamekeepers will often provide supplementary feeding of wheat and maize in the edge habitats via hoppers or hand spread to provide food in the hungry gap between February and May, which particularly benefits pheasants and many other species of birds. Glades are also an essential part of any woodland. They are open spaces with higher light levels and so support a wide range of woodland plants. This makes them important for many insects, for example butterflies, bees, hoverflies, etc. and consequently good feeding areas for birds. Naturally, glades would be created by large trees falling and often kept open by grazing and trampling. Now they are usually created and maintained by cutting. Glades and rides within the wood provide areas suitable for less shade tolerant plants and provided with light, woodland floors come alive with flowers such as bluebells, red campion, foxglove and lily of the valley to name but a few. Woodland butterflies provide a good indicator of the importance of light for overall biodiversity in woodland. Woodland support more than three quarters of all British butterfly species. Of these, two thirds are currently under threat. Not only is this due to the overall loss of woodland habitats, but also as a result of the decline in traditional woodland management techniques, such as coppicing. The caterpillars of most woodland butterflies feed on the herbaceous plants and grasses growing on the woodland floor. Therefore, it follows that if there is no light, then there is no field and grass layer and consequently no food or nectar for the caterpillars and adult butterflies. Increasing the level of insects and caterpillars in a woodland leads to a greater level of woodland bird species that feed upon them. And here are just a few of those. The nightingale lives in scrub and coppice woodland. It eats invertebrates, flies and beetles. Its predators are raptors and mammals. The nuthatch lives in broadleaf woodland and sometimes visit gardens. It also eats insects and invertebrates, seeds and nuts. Its predators are sparrowhawks that take adults, whilst chicks and eggs are vulnerable to a range of predators. The pheasant, found in many managed woodlands, feeds on insects in the field layer and nests in the edge habitats created by rides and glades. Again, the chicks and eggs are vulnerable to many predators from animals to birds. Top of the tree are the goshawks and sparrowhawks, raptors, living in dense woodland and now also seen in gardens, cities and suburban areas. Their diet consists mainly of small birds and the goshawks have no natural predators. In a managed woodland with a good four-tier structure, we can discover a complete biodiversity food chain. At the bottom of the chain, bacteria creating nutrients for fungi. Insects feeding on the fungi and dead wood. Caterpillars feeding on the grasses, herbs and field layer shrubs. Small animals feeding on the herbs and grasses. Small birds feeding on the insects. And at the top of the chain, the hawks feeding on the small birds. Active management allows us to restore some of our declining native species and a managed woodland can support hundreds of individual species. A true biodiversity wonderland for us all to enjoy. So this time we have learnt a little about the woodland conservation management and the importance of managing them actively for the benefit of biodiversity. Next time I'll talk a little about the predators and prey found in each of our three main habitats. Goodbye for now. <laughs>